Been through a whole bunch of stuff. I buried 25 people last year. Seven front rows. This would have been number eight already in the new year if I could do it. But I'm just saying, any time is of the essence. Yeah. We got to get it together. We got to yeah. get it together. And so I want to uh, I want to take you somewhere on today. Since I preached on last Sunday concerning nowhere to hide, I want to go back to that text in Hebrews chapter 4 because I really didn't do the justice I would love to have done with that text. If I could have stayed in that text, because, you know, those kind of messages at least should be expounded on for about an hour and a half. But you know how we are as people, as folk. You know, we want to come to church, we we'll get in our little worship, whatever, but we want to hear a little word, and then we want to be gone and stuff. And I understand that, but, you know, uh, these messages that I be preaching are like no excuse. Romans chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 4, nowhere to hide. Uh, you know, it's, it's concerning the message I'm going to talk about today, dealing with the sufficiency of Scripture, because a lot of people just don't believe what the Bible says. They don't believe it. If they did, this place would be packed right now. If people believe the Bible and what it said about God and who he is and what he's done and what he's doing and what he's prepared for us in the future, this place would be packed out on Wednesday nights for, for uh, the Bible study, for Sunday morning Sunday school, right. if folk really believed it, if they really believed in the sufficiency of it, because it defends itself. The Bible, the Word of God defends itself. It needs no help. But guess what? Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so you need a teacher. You need somebody to, to kind of point you in that right direction. You need, you need somebody to point you to the cross. You need somebody to explain and break down who Jesus really is. And that's what the scriptures are all about. It's all about Jesus from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22. This whole book, all 66 love letters, is about our Savior. That's who it's about. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's who it covers. It talks about Jesus throughout the whole Bible. It's about him. It's his story. History. His story. Amen. That's what it's about. And God deals in history because he's eternal. So he's outside of time. So time, time is not of the essence for him. Time is of the essence for us. Amen. Because we're limited. We're limited. We, we're going to die. Yeah. I, I read it to you this morning in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. Yes. What do you think that's saying? What do you think that means? It means exactly what it says. No Greek or Hebrew. It means what it says. You're going to be born. You have an arrival date to come here. Yeah. And you have an exit date to leave from here. Yeah. You're going to leave it's appointed once for man to die, yes, the Hebrew writer says. Yes. It's an appointment. You're going to make it. Yes. And after that, the judgment. And so I'm trying to prepare y'all for the judgment because it's coming. Yes. Not that you need to be prepared if you know Jesus. Right. If you're in Christ, right. you're going to face him at the beam of seat. You're going to be all right. But if you don't know Christ and the part of your sins, you're going to Go, go before God the Father at the great white throne. And you're going to be judged yeah. for rejecting the good news. For rejecting the sufficiency of this book. These words. Every word in here is power. Every word. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Man. So come with me to Hebrews because I need your attention on this one this morning. Because this is the last time y'all are going to hear from me in a minute. And so I plan to do my best today. Plan to do my best with this one to make this come across just right because you need to know. You need to tell your friends. You need to tell your loved ones, your co-workers, your peers. You need to tell somebody about Jesus because guess what? You might get a phone call and that phone call might be because that's what I got yesterday. Hey, Tony. Hey, look, man. Can you do so and so and so for us? Jasmine passed away. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, man, you done messed me up now. Jasmine gone? Yeah, Jasmine gone, man. She passed away. Can you do service for us? I said, well, dang, she ain't even older than my son. She ain't older than AJ. I know she's 32. I said, well, dang, child. I thought she was doing good. She was doing a lot. She was. Somebody found her in her apartment. 
You need to tell somebody about Jesus. You need to tell your friends. If you believe in him, you can't be ashamed of him. Because if you deny him, he will deny you before the Father and the angels. And that's no joke. That's no joke. And the reason why you can't hide, there's nowhere to hide, is because of the sufficiency of this word. You cannot hide from the word of God because the grass may wither, the flowers may fade, but the word of God will stand forever. And forever means eternal. That word in the Greek means an eternal. That, it doesn't have a limit like our time, kairos. It doesn't have, see, we are limited in our time here on earth. But the word of God will last eternally. Why? It's because it's alive as well. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Let me see if I can explain this just a little bit better to you. Um, today I want to just make this argument. I want to, I want to make this, this, I want to pledge my allegiance and hope that you guys would pledge your allegiance to the word of God too because it's alive. Look at your neighbor and say it's alive. It's alive. Yeah, the word of God is alive. It's alive and well and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And so I'm going to read this verse to you in your hearing and show you why there's nowhere to hide. That's not the theme of this message, but I'm going to read all both of these verses like I did on last Sunday, but I just used one. But today I'm going to use one. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Starting at verse 12, it says, For the word of God, and if I stopped right there, I could. And I could pitch my tent. I could park and land a plane. And I could preach from that right there. Mm -hmm. For the word of God is living and effective. Mm -hmm. It's telling you that this is the only book on the planet. I don't care how many authors wrote how many books because there are so many different authors and so many different writers, whatever. But nobody's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why it's alive. Watch this. It's living and effective and sharper than any two-edged sword. There's something behind that, too. Penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit. That's how alive it is. It'll get down to your soul. It'll get to your spirit. And that's what transforms you. That's what regenerates you. That's what changes you. You don't hear those words tossed around today. Transformation regeneration, but that is the work of the Holy Spirit. And through you having a personal relationship with God and getting into his word and getting fed off of this word, it transforms your thinking. Yes. It regenerates us. It cleanses yes. us. Yes. It washes us. Yes. yes, it does. It says it right here. Penetrating as far as the separation of the soul and spirit. Joints and marrow. So it even do something to your, your, physical, your physical structure. Yeah, yeah you are from, the, from the inside out, you are changed and people will see something different about you. Right. They'll see that God has changed you. Yeah. Folk know that God has changed me yeah. from my past. Yeah. They know he's done something with me. Watch this. It is able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Great God from Zion. What other writing, what other book do you know that can judge your thoughts? I'm talking about know what you think before you think it. I'm talking about your intents, your motives. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We got intentions and we got motives. But listen, the word of God already know your motives and your intents. Before you even think them. Come on, it, it, it's penetrating. It, it pierces. It gets down to the nitty gritty of who you really are. Come on, you can't fool. Listen, you can fool me, but you can't fool the word of God. You can't fool Jesus. You can't fool the Holy Spirit. But you can fool me. It says, no creature is hidden from him. Him who? Jesus. The judge, the king that's coming back because the judgment is on its way. No creature is hidden from him. But all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must Give an account. Yeah. Yeah. Pray God from yeah. time. Yeah. If I just stop right there. Because yeah. we all are going to give an account. Yeah. Yes, we all got to stand before him. Yeah. 
Yeah. Either at the big seat, yeah. which is going to be good for us as, as believers, because he's still going to show you why he saved you. He's going to show you what he saved you from. Damnation, condemnation. He's going to show you that he saved you from that second death, the lake of fire brimstone. He's going he to roll back. Come on, he's going to rewind back. Your whole life, when you did your first sin and you didn't even know you were sinning. I wish I had some praise. You. you ain't got to work with me today. I told y'all I'm getting ready to go out for surgery now. So this is my last day to get it. He can do it, yes, and he, he will do it, yes, he because his word says so. Oh, yeah. And do you know this is why people don't want to read the Bible? Oh, For these two verses right here, that's my assumption. That's just me. That's just me talking. Because it exposes who you really are. Right. When you look in the mirror and you think you're looking at somebody, really you're not looking at that true person. That true person is the soul. Amen. See, listen, this is another reason why you can't hide. is because you was created in his image. Right. I wish I had some praying right. people. Right. You was created in his image. So how can you get away from something or someone? Let me say someone. How can you get away from someone that is who you really are? Amen. Your soul, you're created in his image. You can't get away from him. Amen. But people think they can hide. People have a whole bunch of secrets. Guess what? He know your secrets. He know all about you. David said it. David said it in Psalm 139. Where can I go from your presence? Where can I flee from your spirit? You can't go no way. If you think you're getting away from him, you're not. You're fooling yourself. And he's going to get the last life. He's going to get the last life now. So stop taking him for granted. If I can use for a subject matter today because... You know, this stuff gets to me because I, I be wondering, I be thinking like, why do people take God for granted and why do they, they don't think that he's true to his word and he's going to do what he said he's going to do? He's going to do everything that he said he's going to do. Listen, listen, this stuff is happening and we see what just happened in Texas and we see what happened in Buffalo and we see the coronavirus and all that mess and we know that's not God. We know that man... They, they did that. This is biochemical warfare. They did that. That's this this messed us out. They tried to depopulate the, the place. They started out trying to depopulate black folk and immigrants, Mexicans, stuff like that. But guess what? It backfired on them. They got their people too. Got a whole bunch of folk. But guess what? Their sacrifice just to get their agenda carried out. Uh -huh. They'll take it about. Their sacrifice. People sacrifice. Do you know that there are sacrifices that go on in Hollywood every day? In order for you to get that little gold statue, that little idol that people worship called an Oscar, you got to sacrifice. You got to sell your soul. I wish I had some great people. You think that they got it because they accomplished so much because of their acting talents and their skills and abilities. That ain't the reason why they got the Oscar. They sold, they sold for that little gold statue because that's what they worship. I wish I had some great people. Wait for the amens of that. You ain't got to believe me. Know what I'm talking about. I've done the research. So listen, if I can use for a message this morning a theme, I want to use this, scripture sufficiency. Scripture sufficiency, your view of scripture. What is your view of the Bible? How do you view it? What do you think about it? Do you really know God? Because a lot of folk really don't know God. I've preached about that before too, out of Psalms 100. A lot of folk just don't really know God. They say it clichéously. That's a Don King word, because I know that's not a real word. But they say it like a cliché. Uh -huh. I know the Lord. Yeah, I love the Lord. And all this. But your lifestyle shows something different. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, you see, see, you ought to keep your mouth shut if you really don't know him. Amen. Just say you don't know him. And then go in the word of God and have this, you know, cultivate a relationship with him and get to know him. That's right. But don't say you That's know him just because he's blessed you and this. He blesses, watch this, the wicked as well as the righteous. Yes, he do. The Bible says he showed the sun on the wicked as well as the righteous. Right. Uh, he reigned on the just as well as the unjust. Right. And so that's called common grace. 
And so folk that don't even know him for real, for real, guess what? He still blesses them. Yeah. Yeah. So don't be tripping. Don't get it twisted. Like, yeah, I know the Lord. I love the Lord. But as soon as all hell break out in your life, you start going crazy. You lose your mind. You don't know who to turn to. You don't know where to go. You don't know who to talk to. You need to have a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Tell him all about your troubles. Yeah. And he'll see you. After a while, by and by. Scripture sufficiency because, listen, it defends itself if you just give it an opportunity, not a chance. Give it an opportunity. Get into it. Read it. Read something in here. It tells us all about these different things that's happening. That stuff that happened to babies that's going away from here out here in Texas. That's in Matthew 25. Watch this. It's a sign of the time. Yeah. That stuff that happened in Buffalo, guess what? It's a sign of the time. That's what it is. The weather being like it was last week, a week before last, it was cold. It was cold. It was cold here. But 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 it was hot out in Colorado. That's not that's not climate control. That's not that's not eco. But what that is is that God's showing you that I control the weather. I wait for the amen to die down. Y'all can listen to the meteorologists all you want to. God control it. Doctor and Wavy TV 10 don't tell you. All they can do is predict. Just like when you go to the doctors, all the doctors can do is assess and predict. They really don't know what's wrong with you. They, they can go but so far. And then they'll give you a pill for it. Amen. Until you take this pill and bite this apple, eat this apple a day, and keep the doctor away. I got a doctor here. I ain't joking. I ain't messing with you. I got a doctor in the house. I ain't messing with you. But I'm just saying, people assume, they predict, they speculate. Don't get it twisted. You don't have to speculate this. You, you don't have to assume this. You, you don't have to try to predict this. Because it's true, it defends itself. And so how do you view it? What do you think about it? Do you even think that it's real? Do you even think that God the Father, the Trinity is real? Do you think that Jesus is real? Yes, sir. Do you think the Holy Spirit is real? Yes. Do you think that we have angels encamped around us? Angels yes. guarding us, angels watching over us, angels protecting us. Do you believe that? Because it's in here. I believe every word that's in here, every word I believe in, no inerrancy, no contradiction, no errors, no flaws, no mistakes, it's perfect. I just read it to you and you hear it. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It says the word of God living and active. Yes, yes. It's living and active. Cultivating the discernment that comes from a biblical worldview has never been more vital. But whether it's parenting, whether it's manhood, womanhood, success, self-esteem, racial reconciliation, church leadership, ministry, philosophy, or something else, the list goes on. The message that bombards Believers is always the same. Mm -hmm. The Bible isn't sophisticated enough to equip you for life today. You need some other insight, some other framework to help you interpret the world. I stopped by to tell you today that you need the word of God yes. in your life yes. every second of every minute of every hour of every day of every week of every month of every year to interpret this world for you. God has already told you where this world is going. It's headed to hell in a handbasket. If you don't believe we're in the new world order, you are still Rip Van Winkle. You still asleep. I wait for the amens and not that. You're Rip Van Winkle. You're still asleep. That's what's wrong with the church today. That's why there's really no infused power from the Holy Spirit in the church today. It's because the church, Christendom in a whole, is Rip Van Winkle that's asleep. Because a whole bunch of Christians, a whole bunch of believers don't believe this. They're religious. I wait for the amens and not that. They're living religious. And so there's no power. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit got to have a, a temple or an instrument or a vessel he can reside in. Yeah. Yeah. And he can do some things. Yeah. 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 
But it comes from the word of God. Right. It comes from your time with God. And you need to spend all the time you can in these last and evil days that we're living in to get to know him better, yeah. to draw nearer to God. James says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Yeah. Because why? He's present in his yeah. word. You might want to feel him and touch him and reach out and touch him, but guess what? All you got to do is open up the book. Amen. I wait for the amen to die down. I wish I had some praying people in here. Open up the book, yes. and he's that near to you. That's right. He's that close to you. Open up the book. Amen. I know you want to call the preacher. I know you want to call the deacons. Can you pray for me? I done so and so and so. Uh, you know, I always, I used to listen to to uh, <laughs> crusade for Christ, but I stopped listening to it because people was calling with the craziest stuff. Hey, I need a financial blessing. Then get in the church and bring your tithes and offerings. Mm. Come on now. <laughs> I wait for the amen to die down. <laughs> Can you pray for me a financial blessing? I'm hurting. Can you pray that this pain will go away? No, you need to go see your doctor. You need to get examined. And you probably need a pill. What you want, a blue and a pink one or a white? Right. Say matrix. Right. I'm just saying. Right. You know, people, I, I need this, I need that. Get in the word. Yeah. Yeah. Get in the, this, is, this is all you need. Listen, really, this is all you need is the word of God. And you spend time with God. And you give him some of your time. You can do everything else you want to do. You can go to parties, you can go to the right. club, right. you can go to the liquor store, you can go to the Walmart, you can go everywhere, anywhere you want to go. But you don't want to give him no time. Right. But you can go anywhere and, and party and have your good time for two, three hours. Amen. A room full of people with no mask on their face. I wait for the amen to die down. Blowing their breath in your face. All that stuff. The look of breath in your face. Smoking cigarettes in your face. Smoking weed, smoking blunts. You came in smelling good, you go out smelling like weed. Uh -huh. I wait for the amen to die down. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Where, where? See, see, people think that the Bible is not sophisticated enough to give them the answers that they need for their everyday necessities, for their everyday needs, amen. for life. But it is. Yes, it is. I tell the Bible study here all the time that, you know, uh, the Word of God has an answer for every question that you yes. have. Yeah, right. I don't care what it is. It, it's in here. Yeah. It's, it's like ragu spaghetti sauce. It's in there. It's in there. All you got to do is spend some time with him. Spend some time with him. The old age temptation is to mistrust. Watch this. What God has said in Genesis 3. You remember what the serpent told Eve? He said, did God say? And so this is the lie and the deception that Satan has been using and attacking the word of God and God's people throughout eons. Uh -huh. uh -huh. He's been using that same slogan. He's been using that same thing. He used that stuff because he knows that people are frail here. Right. You're talking about right. mental health. Y'all want to call these right. shootings mental health? It ain't mental health. That's demonic. That's it's it. evil. That's it. it is worse. That's it. And you ain't seen nothing yet. That's right. We ain't seen nothing yet. Just when we think we've seen the worst of tragedies and stuff, yes. that, these attacks and stuff yes. like that, we ain't seen nothing yet. Just when we think that we've seen the worst of storms like Katrina, you ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. It's something on the horizon. There's something twirling over in Africa. It's going to come all the way over here and do some damage. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hurricane season is getting ready to start in a couple of days. All right. Okay. All right. You ain't got to believe me. Recovering a biblical worldview is a vital topic for the church today, especially when churches are increasingly poisoned by a corrupt media, a deceitful politician or a deceitful politicians and charlatan leaders pretending to speak for God, and I'm talking about oh, yeah, yeah. that movement. Oh, yeah. There's a movement, and people believe in that charismatic movement. They, they believe in those preachers. God wants you to be wealthy. God yeah. wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be rich. You keep believing that foolishness. Yeah, You're going to go straight to hell with them. If they don't repent, they're going straight to hell. All right. If they can repent. I ain't got 
never call no names. Y'all know who I'm talking about. They, they're charlatans. They, they, well, John chapter 10 called them hirelings. Uh -huh. yeah, see, they run. They run. But when the master came, this good shepherd, when the good shepherd came, he came through the front door. Oh, I mean, because he is the door. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Y'all right. ain't got to believe me. <laughs> Truth itself is constantly under attack. Mm -hmm. Watch this. The world system is built on lies and is creating more and blatant, outrageous lies to maintain its control. And we see that with COVID. Can you see it with COVID? Yes. Uh -huh. They lied and lied and lied and lied and lied. And listen, they've been proven that they've been lying. But guess what? The lie has stuck. And so guess what? You still have millions of people riding around in their cars by themselves with a mask on their face. Yeah. I wait for the amen to die down. I turn my AC on and blow my AC. Yes. And I ride, let it ride. Yes, sir. That's what I do. Amen. I ain't wearing no mask in my car by myself. No. Ain't nobody breathing no. on me. No. Jesus. The lie, the deception, yeah. and people have fallen for it. Yeah. And guess what? Corona is it, it's real. Yeah. And it's killing people. It's yeah. real. But it's uh -huh. a biochemical agent. It is. That's what it is. It's, it's you know, CDC, the UN, all of them, the big pharmaceutical. All of them are in cahoots. Yep. The World Health Organization. Right. All of them. They're coming from our government. It's a lie. It's corrupt. And you're saying, Pastor Willie, you're saying that so bold. Don't you think that you're going to be reprimanded? I don't care. Amen. I wait for the amen to die. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Right. Jesus is my last. Right. That's who I bow down to. Right. I don't bow down to man. Right. I will not bow down to yeah. man. Yeah. And whatever happens to me, it'll happen to me. Yeah. To God be the glory. Because yes, right. the truth has to be told. Yes, then the scripture says, if you know the Son indeed, the truth shall yes, set you free. Yes, well, don't you want to be free? Yes, yes. Yes. Who wants to be in slavery and bondage? Haven't we been in slavery and bondage long enough? Yes, yes, yes. It's one thing to be in physical and mental and emotional bondage, but to be in spiritual bondage, you must be out of your mouth. Amen. I don't want to walk around in spiritual bondage, not knowing the truth. But listen, the sufficiency of the scriptures to tell you that all this stuff that we've been dealing with here the last couple of years has been a lie and deception. It's a fear tactic. It's to make you fear. It's to make you fear man. They ain't pointing you to God. You ain't heard nothing in the whole Corona era. You ain't heard nothing. You ain't heard none of them talk about Jesus. And they're not going to because that's going to mess up their money. Don't you know that that's why Jesus came here when he spoke the word to the Pharisees and the scribes and Sadducees? It messed up their game. It messed up their money. And so if we tell the truth now, it'll mess up our government's money. But they're going to get this money. Because it's a new world order. Yeah. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't study this. Uh, this will tell you that we're in a new world order. This will tell you that we're in a culture, in a society that's anti-Christ. That's against Jesus. That's against God, Father, and Holy Spirit. That's where we live. All right, y'all ain't got to believe me. I'll wait for the amens to die down. Yes, sir. They want to be in control, this system. Yeah. It's outrageous, their lives. But Jude, in Jude, and Jude is the smallest, one of the smallest writings uh, in the New Testament. Yeah. Um, Philemon is also. But Jude got some words in here that tells us just what I was sharing with you guys. Let me read a few of these words to you in the hearing so you can get what I'm saying so you won't know. And you'll know that I'm speaking from the Bible. In Jude, the book of Jude, back then by Revelations. After uh, first John, uh, I mean third John. Anyway, so Jude is Jude said these words, starting in verse ten. It's only twenty five verses. It says, "But but these people blaspheme anything they do not understand, mm -hmm. and what they do understand by instinct, like irrational animals. By these things they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain." have plunged into Balaam's era for profit and have purchased 
in chorus rebellion. All of that, all of these people was punished. Cain was punished. Balaam, the uh, uh, so-called prophet, uh, he was a false prophet. He was punished. Korah, the people of Korah was punished. All of them was having a party and an orgy while Moses was collecting the Ten Commandments. And so all these people, it says they were acting irrational like animals. Mm -hmm. So they acting like they lost their minds. Now this is talking about, these, these are these pretenders. This is talking about these preachers. This is about apostasy. These people are dangerous reefs at your love feasts as they eat with you without reverence. They are, watch this, they are shepherds who only look after themselves. They are waterless clouds carried along by the winds, trees in late autumn, fruitless, uh, twice dead and uprooted. They are wild waves of the sea foaming up their, shame, up their shameful deeds, wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. I wish I had time and I could break that down for y'all because that's got a lot of meat in it. That's, but I, I don't have time because I'm going to read the rest of these verses to you. It says, it was about these that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, look, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all of the ungodly concerning all the ungodly acts that they have done in an ungodly way and concerning all the harsh things ungodly sinners have said against him. Him who? Him, Jesus. Watch this. These people are dis, watch this, contented, grumblers, living according to their desires. Their mouths utter arrogant words, flattering people for their own advantages. This is talking about preachers. This is talking about leadership in the church. All right, y'all, but watch this. Uh -huh. But you, dear friends, remember what was predicted by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They told you in the end time, here we are, there will be scoffers living according to their own ungodly desires. These people create divisions and are worldly, not having the spirit. Big S, Holy Spirit, not having the spirit. But you, dear friends, as you build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting expectantly for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. Have mercy on those who waver. Save Save others by snatching them from the fire. Have mercy on others, but with fear, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling, this is the word of God. Here's a sufficiency. And to make you stand in his presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the glory, majesty, power and authority before all time now and forever. Amen. 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 Yes, that's it right there. That's it. If I didn't say no more, that's it. We're watched as coordinated assaults on the truth have unfolded before our eyes. Watch this. Uh, in conven inconvenience facts are dismissed as misinformation while obvious falsehoods are repeated and spread far and wide, regardless of our flaws and our failures and blame, we are sufficiently covered in the truth. I just read that to you. Knowing God's word, but you got to know God's word for yourself. Right. We stand before holy God based on our commitment to the truth and that he is going to declare us righteous in his eyes. See, because of what his son Jesus Christ did, he atoned for our sins. Yes. He's our perpetuator. When we face him at the Bema seat, guess what? He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful. That's right. That's right. And we did nothing to deserve it. That's right. I wait for the amen to die down. All we deserve, we deserve the cross. Yes. We deserve to go to hell. Yes. I wish I had some praying people. I just, yes. But Jesus, yes. come on, at Golgotha, Yes. Stretched out far and wide. Yes. Yes. Hung head, he, his hung hang down and laid down, and, and he even asked the father before he did that, forgive them for they do not understand. Great God from I'm talking about from the cross. Yes. Woo! But you got to know 
that you know that you know. Ain't nobody tell me that I'm ready. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Yeah. For myself. Yeah. Yeah. That is the sufficiency of the scriptures. Yeah. How are God's people supposed to navigate a world so overrun with deception in Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to give you a few verses of scripture to let you know the sufficiency of scripture and how you ought to view it. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 it says these words. It says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Uh -huh. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 5 says every word of God is flawless. Yeah. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you hear that? That's the sufficiency of scripture. But how do you view it? How do we guard our hearts and our minds from the world's lies and its corrupting influence? In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus answered it. He said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, it says, don't just listen to God's word. Watch this. You must do what it says. Right. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. I wait for the amen to die down. That is the sufficiency of God's word. But how do you view it? How do you view God? How do you view this Bible? Do you even spend any time You'll spend time sitting down looking at Goma Powell. Right. I know you do. You sit down and look at Goma Powell. You look at Andy Griffin. You look at any TV show you want to look at. You look at Steve Harvey on Family Feud. He got about five shows that come on right behind with him. You'll sit there and you'll look at that stuff, but you won't spend five minutes here. You won't spend five minutes with him. So how do you know how to navigate in this world? Period. As a Christian, as a believer, how do you know how to navigate without the manual? This is a life book. Yes, sir. Yes. How do you know how to operate? How do you know how to even behave? Okay, all right, y'all, okay. I, I know what y'all saying. Well, Lois, he's stepping heavy. I'm getting ready to leave. I won't be back up here for a few, so I'm taking my time. Can I take my time? I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. It starts with your view of scripture. Yeah. How do you view God? How do you call yourself loving him and worshiping him and serving him and you won't even come to get spiritual development? You need to come to Sunday school. You need to come to Bible study. That's how you get spiritual development and spiritual. Listen, you can't discern without this. Right. Because discernment is a gift from God. Yeah. That's nothing of the world. That's the Holy Spirit illuminating your understanding. It's the Holy Spirit lighting up your mind. Yeah. That's how you discern good from bad. Yeah. That's how you discern right from wrong. Yeah. That's from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You can't get it from me. Yeah. If you think you can get it from yeah. coming here yeah. for a couple of hours. And then you don't see me no more after that. You can't get it like that. You got to take the time to spend the time in this book by yourself. Me and my wife, we'll do it sometimes together, but she do it on her time. I do it on mine. You know why? Because we have to spend that quality time with God by ourselves. We can come together anytime and share his word. Amen. Amen. But you got to get this. She gets hers by herself. She gets up early every morning. And she's in it, praying and reading. Amen. Yeah, she's stretching out to God because that's how she wants to start her day with Him. Yeah. Yeah. I do the same thing. Because mm -hmm. that's how you got to do it yeah. in order to navigate in this world. Let me move on because I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, y'all. Look at, look at your neighbor and say, He's coming. Yeah. He's coming. I'm getting, ready, I'm getting ready to tighten up in just a few minutes. If you suspect that God's word isn't entirely accurate or authoritative, you left yourself exposed to and defenseless against Satan or satanic attacks because once you don't really spend time here, you open yourself up for Satan. That's right. That's right. Because then he can come and rent space in your mind. Yeah. You know why we got the helmet of salvation? Some of y'all don't even know you got a whole armor to put on. Because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. 
Ain't that what, ain't that what Jehazel told Jehoshaphat, Second Chronicles chapter 20? The battle is not yours, it's the Lord. But he gave us some armor to put on. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6. And sometimes you won't even put that armor on and you wonder why you get attacked. You're exposed because you haven't spent no time. Yeah. You haven't even asked God to cover you. I'm just saying. You open yourself up for satanic attacks. The devil's first assault on God's word was, watch this, to question its clarity and its authority. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, he, didn't he tell Eve? And this is, man, let me tell y'all, God dropped this in my spirit. God dropped this in my spirit uh, when I was reading and studying this. The reason why we are seduced by women, why women can so easily get us, is because Eve was seduced by the serpent. He changed her whole worship. Yes, he did. yeah, she worshiped him over God because she listened to him over God. She heard what God, but guess what? Y'all got that seductive thing in you. Guess what? You don't even try to use it. You ain't got to try to use it because it's already in you. Because the serpent had seduced Eve. Yeah. He made her believe that lie. Did God really mm -hmm. say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But his word did really say. Yes. Yeah. She heard what he told Adam. Yeah. She heard it. Adam know what was said to him. Yeah. But he turned around and worshipped his wife. And that's why you got some of these guys walking around here with jelly in their backs. Uh, I'll, even, I'll even go as far as call them a bob. <laughs> Bend over boys. Yeah, because of the fact that, yeah, the wife is the head of the household. The wife yeah. runs the house. Yeah. Now, the wife, my wife is the head of my house. Guess what? She takes care of the kids. She makes sure that stuff is straight. She makes sure the home is right for me. That it's peaceful when I come home. Not a bunch of foolishness and craziness. But guess what? I am the head yeah. of the household. And so when I say something or make decisions, that's what we go on. We call equal, but guess what? She don't step over her boundaries. Amen. Amen. I'll step back. If she step up and want to take my place, go ahead. Hit, hit me the shoes. Step in them. Step in them. If you can, step in them. She ain't going to do it. I know she ain't going to do it. She understands what the word of God says, but guess yeah, what? Yeah, Everybody yeah. don't know what it says about right. that. Because right. you got some women that run the house. Amen. You got some women that tell the man, listen, this is what you better do. Amen. This is what you better do. They don't ask them or suggest them. This is what you better do. Because if you don't, Amen. I'm right there. Amen. I'm locking up the cooking job. Amen. You know, they throw the crazy mess at you. And then and here you go. Okay. Okay, baby. Whatever you say. Oh no, we're not supposed to be like that. If you the man, be a man. Okay. All right. You know, they play that stuff, you know, with us. Since then, he has watched this. I'm talking about Satan. Since then, he has likewise enticed every generation of God's people to doubt what the Lord has said and what he means by what he says. And that's why people do not want to read the word of God. That's why they don't want to study. That's why they don't want to meditate. But how can you spiritually grow and develop if you don't spend time in here? I can't do it for you. I can only do it for me. I can't do it for my wife. I can't do it for my family. I can only do it for me. That's right. It's personal. Yes, and he's called you to a personal relationship and you got to spend the time. Yes. And not just think you're going to come to church and get it in a message. That's right. That's right. No, yes. you got to leave from here and be like the Bereans. Paul, we believe God sent you. Paul, we know that God sent you. But we got to go and study this thing for yes, ourselves. Yes, That's right. All right, y'all. All right now. Yeah. But it's not just the clarity and the authority of God's word that are under attack today. Satan also wants us to doubt scripture's sufficiency, to look beyond the Bible for insight and answers somewhere else. Theory, philosophy, worldview. There's no answers there for the word of God. That's right. That's right. Methods, techniques. There's no answers there. Secular writings. You got some scholars out here. You got some theologians out here. But they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They don't even know what this word says. 
They have the knowledge of the word. They can tell you history. They can run you through Greek and Hebrew, run you around in circles. Right. But they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and the pardon of their sins. They're going straight to hell too if they don't repent. Amen. I wish I had some praying people. Y'all don't have to agree with me. I got an amen over here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. The search for something more than God's word is a corrupt root bearing bad fruit throughout the church. Some, watch this, some look to psychology and man-centered wisdom to mitigate their guilt and to quiet their consciences. So they look to religion. So they think that religion, they, Catholicism, they think that that's being a Christian. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, if they don't repent, yeah. I want y'all to hear me loud and yeah. clear. They're going straight to hell. Because yeah. Catholicism is what? It's man theology. Yeah. Scientology is what? It's a man's theology. Muslim, the Muslim word, the Quran, that's man's theology. Yeah, Vericon will tell you that you can be a Christian and a Muslim. That's a lie from the pits of hell. That don't even sound right. Either you're a Muslim or either you're a Christian. I wonder which one you are. Because you can't be both. Because the Quran says so. What's the Quran? It's man's theology. Okay. All right. Because people are looking for everything, but they won't go here. This is what you need. This is the truth. This is what's going to set you free. But you got to look for it in sophistication. Got to look for it in science and technology. You know, everybody's into technology because we're in a techno world. Amen. It's right in here. Amen. All right. Okay. Others look to political activism and the social justice movements to watch this accomplish what they believe biblical truth is inadequate to do. Yeah, Black Lives Matter. Well, the Black Lives Matter movement is not about black people and our ills. It's not about what's going on in our community, black on black crime, our children killing each other and all that kind of stuff. The Black Lives Movement is ran by lesbians, Marxists, socialists, and they've gotten rich off of people giving money and donations. Do your research! They buy multi-million dollar homes and stuff off of what? People's hard-earned money because they're saying, hey, we're going to go out here and we're going to march and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. It's not for us as a people. Amen. It's not about our unemployment and social economics. Y'all better read the Bible. Amen. That's what your answer is. Amen. Your answer is in the word of God. So people look for things like that. They look to that stuff. Still others are convinced that the Bible cannot meet all their needs. They require a personal, direct word from the Lord. And I hear people always saying that kind of stuff. Listen, exercise your faith. Just exercise your faith. You're looking for the Lord to speak to you. Maybe he did speak to you. Maybe he spoke to you in a circumstance. Maybe he spoke to you in a dream. Maybe he gave you a vision. Maybe he spoke to you through the radio. Maybe he spoke through, to you through a message on television. But you got to listen for the message. But yeah, listen, yeah. you can't even connect with God's voice if you ain't in here. Right. I wait for the amen. Right. You can tell me all day long he's talking to you. But I still see your life in a shambles. Your life is still messed up. Amen. So people look for different ways out when all they got to do is read the Bible. If the church is going to withstand, watch this, its onslaughts of the world's lies and deception, we need to rekindle our affection for the word of God. And I'm praying. I've been praying for five years, Deacon Carl Jones note. We talk about it all the time. I've been praying for an awakening, Deacon. I've been praying for the Holy Spirit to give the church an awakening, wake us Amen. up. Amen. You know, the Muslims are out there on the streets doing their stuff. Jehovah's Witnesses are sending letters in the mail that they ain't coming to your house because they ain't give you their blood transfusion. They ain't dying. They ain't be watching. You know, uh, but you know, the Mormons gonna be riding their bicycles because it's getting hot now. But where's the church? I'm asking the Holy Spirit to wake us up. Yes. And the only way that we're going to wake up is we're gonna, we got to get in the Word. Yes. we got to study the Word. we got to get in the Word, spend some time with Him so that He can let our light so shine, so that we can be the salt of the earth, 
so that you can share with your family members and co-workers and peers and people that you work with in the marketplace, uh -huh. where you go, even here in the church, because there are some people that come to church and just don't know the law. That's right. That's they right. just don't know. That's right. Not from what the Bible says about them. Mm -hmm. They might have known something they heard. Mm -hmm. They heard somebody say something. And they say, and they took that and they ran with it. Amen. But they didn't study it for themselves. You got to get in this word and spend some time in this word because Amen. the sufficiency of scripture Amen. defends itself. Amen. But how do you view scripture? How do you view God? Besides saying that you know him and you love him, how else do you view him? Who is he to you? Jehovah El Shaddai, the priestly one, the one is more than enough, the all-sufficient one. That's who he is to me. Uh -huh. Jehovah Rapha. It's he'll meet every need you need. He's my healer. He's my peace. So long. Yes. Yes. Who is he to you? I am that I am. That's what he told Moses. Tell him I am. Yes. 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 I am who? who? Who am? I am whoever you need me to be. Whatever you need me for. I am that person. Yes. That's who he is to us. Yes. But how would you know that? If you don't spend no time in here. And I'm not saying you got to be a scholar. You have to read the Bible for 30 years like I've been reading. Because everybody always say, well, I don't know stuff like you know, Pat. You spend some more. I do spend time with him daily. Why? is because I love cultivating my relationship with him. Why? It's because he excites me. He intrigues me. He blows my mind. And I love just to open up the word and get something from him so that I can share with y'all. Y'all think I sit down and just put this together? It don't work like that. It came from the Holy Spirit. I wish I had some friends. I'm not intelligent enough to do this kind of life. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, I'm almost finished, y'all. I am, for real. I'm coming to the close. I am, I just gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. We must submit to his authority. We must defend his clarity, and we must proclaim the sufficiency of the scripture. We must echo Paul's words and his convictions when he said these words in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. He says, all scripture is inspired by yes. God and profitable for teaching, yes. for reproof, for correction, oh. for training in righteousness so that the man of God... That's right. Perfect. Would be perfect or right. be equipped yes. to do the work that That's God right. has called him to. Amen. See, the reason why I can do this Amen. is because I spent time in the Word. Yeah. Right. If you notice, that's all I talked about was the Word. Yeah. It was His Word. It is the yeah. sufficiency of the Word. And so, how do you view His Word? Do you even believe His Word? Do you even love Him? Do you even love Him enough? To go in the word. Amen. I dare you to try. Amen. To even Amen. see what he's about. Yeah. Oh, to even see if he's real. If it's true. I know some of y'all say I've been praying to God for five years. He still ain't answering my prayer. Keep praying. That's right. That's right. Keep yeah. trusting and keep believing. Yeah. That's what I do. I keep trusting. I believe that he's going to. One day he's going to answer my prayer. Yeah. Even if he called me out of here. That's an answer. Yeah. I wait for the amen to die there. That's an answer. Yeah. Well, pass it going on to be with the Lord. That's an answer. Amen. But try him. I dare you. I dare you to try him. But the only way you're going to do it is you got to get in this word. Amen. You can't come and rely on me. You just can't. You just can't. Amen. I need a savior. Amen. I need a shepherd just like Amen. you do. Y'all say, well, you the man of God, you the preacher, you the pastor. But I am a sinner saved yes. by grace. Amen. Amen. I need him just Amen. like you need him. Amen. I need him just as much or more yes. because yes. the attacks are coming on me more yes. than it is you. Yes. Don't get it twisted. Amen. Don't think because, Pastor, you walking with the Lord. Uh -huh. God got you shielded. He got you covered. Ain't, ain't nothing going to happen to you. Don't get it twisted. I'm Amen. walking around in pain. Amen. That's right. Amen. For four years. Jesus. Don't get it twisted. I've had tragedies in my family too. Lost my grandson, my first grandbaby, lost him to murder in the streets. 
I got diabetes type two, so I gotta watch what I eat. I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta exercise. Yeah. I can't even exercise because of this pain in my body. Don't get it twisted. Don't think yes. that just yes. because I'm walking with the Lord, everything is roses and everything no. is peaches and cream. It don't work like that. No, no, no. The devil really, he's gonna get at me now yes. because I said this word with you. I done opened up a Pandora's box. But you need to go in the Pandora's box. Get what you can from this book. Everything you stand in need of is in this pipe. Everything you need. From A to Z. From your birth date to your exit date. Guess what? He got the answer for you. He got what you need in here. Everything is in here that you stand in need of. Well, Pastor Willard, I don't know. I think I need to go see a psychiatrist. Yes. Go see Jesus. Yes. Don't go to Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil is going to take your money. He might make you feel good by the time you leave from there. But he only made you feel good because he just took your money. You done made him feel good. You go to Dr. Jesus, you ain't got to pay for this. I'll read for amen. You will get this one for free. All right. All right. All right. I'm getting ready to go. All right. We finished. Come on. Stand to your feet. Amen. The doors of the church are open. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, you need to come. You need to make your peace with him on the day. You don't need to wait. You don't need to be asking nobody about you heard it for yourself. You heard the word of God. It's more to that than, than what I could even share because it's a, a lot to it. I, that was just a, a pen tip. That was a pen tip. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. But guess what? You need to take the time and invest some time with him on today. Because yes. you just don't know. None of yes. us in here knows yes. what tomorrow holds. We don't even know. That's we right. know for sure tomorrow is not promised to us. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And so you need to make your peace with God. You don't need to keep living a certain way. You don't keep need to keep doing a certain thing. When you hear a message like this, you need to make up your heart and mind. I need Jesus. Yeah. I need to come to Jesus. Yeah, you can get it at the crib. You can get it at home. You can get it. You can get it. I, I did. I, I didn't. I didn't get it in church. I actually, mm -hmm. but I was raised up here, so it was already in me. Amen. Amen. I was raised up here as a little boy. I left this church. I came here when I was about seven or eight. Left this church when I was about fourteen. Didn't go back to nobody's church until I was in my early thirties when I gave my life to Christ. Amen. Amen. But guess what? He brought me around full circle. I'm yes, back here again. Yes. 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 He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you if you let him. So the doors of the church are open. If you don't know them in the part of your sins, you need to come. You need, you need to make your peace with God. Because I'm going to tell you right now, we just don't know. You know, mm -hmm. my heart is really full from uh, knowing Jasmine's loss. I mean, 32, young girl, just started practicing law. She just got a law degree. She just got her master's. Mm -hmm. And started practicing law. And now she's gone. Mm -hmm. And they don't know why. Mm -hmm. They just know somebody found her. But I'm just saying... We just don't know. Yeah. We just don't know. We don't need to play with it. We don't need to play with God. Amen. We don't need to play with time. Time is of the essence. Yeah. You don't need to be thinking, well, I got time because when I leave from here, I'm going to the beach and I'm going to a cookout. Well, you ain't got that kind of time either. Right. You might think you're going to do all right. that. But he can stop you at the door. Yes, he can. He can stop you right at the yes, door. So don't get it twisted. You ain't got time. You don't have time. And don't let the devil lie to you and deceive you and tell you, yeah, Pastor Willard, everything he said is right. Everything he said was right. It's the word of God. But you got time. Don't listen to that lie. Amen. You don't have time. So let us bow our hearts to the throne of grace. Father in heaven, we love you on today. We thank you for a sobering time. Thank you, Lord. A time to just listen to you today. We heard you. I heard you loud and clear. I heard you when you gave it to me. Loud and clear. Yes, Lord. And I know that the sufficiency of your word, it rests on just that, your word. Yes, Lord. It needs no help. Oh, it defends Lord. itself. We just need to come into your presence. And so there's hope in your presence. Yes, yes, that we would just enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Yes, and yes. Just enter into your courts with praise. Yes. There's hope yes. in your presence. Yes. And so on today, I pray for hope. Yes, Lord. For those who are struggling out there in YouTube land, for those who are struggling in here, who are weak,
who just don't know what to do. Yeah. That they will have a conversation with you yeah. according to your word. And that you will give it to them. Press upon their hearts, O oh Lord, to spend time with you. We thank you and we love you and we bless you for our Lord and Savior, yeah. our Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Yeah. And as we depart from this place but not your presence, O oh God. We ask that you will be with us yes, to our destinations, O oh Lord. Yes, and cap your angels. We love you and we bless you in the precious yes, name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Yes, that everybody who love him and agree, say amen. Yes. Amen again. Yes. Grace, peace, and mercy. Yes.